All right, so right now I'm going to explain how you disconnect the front windshield from your E36 Vert, your automatic top. Now, this is the, the manual top right here, but right here in this spot, you will have a, uh, if you have the trim piece, if you don't, you'll see a cylinder, and then you'll see a little uh, torque size hole for the cylinder. I'm gonna insert a clip, right? So you know what I'm talking about? It covers this piece right here. This is what I'm talking about. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick, I stuck a torque, I stuck a torque socket in this bitch. Uh, yeah, I stuck a torque in this with a socket wrench. You twist it clockwise, keep winding it, and it unhooks these like very, very slowly. It takes a lot of winding. Ooh, focus. But that's what I'm talking about. So what you do is you stick a, I stuck a torque socket, <clears throat> my bad, a torx bit in that little hole you twist it clockwise it's going to take a lot of twisting because you have to unwind the hooks slowly it's a slow process but you have to unwind the hooks and it'll slowly disconnect the top from the windshield all the directions for that i'm going to list below after you disconnect the front windshield you're going to go to your rear seat you're going to pop this open well you're just going to take it off it's going to be a latch like a lever that's your emergency latch. When you pull that latch, it's going to drop the rear motor. It's going to disconnect your locks. And this is going to be able to pop up. If this doesn't pop up, that means you have slack in your uh, in the cables from the latch to the, uh, to the mechanism that releases the locks. If that's your issue, then you're going to have to do what I did. Is I had to cut holes in the, the Tananu cover and disconnect the locks from the inside. The locks are held in. By the locks are held in by two bolts, one bolt here and one bolt there. All right, it's the same on each side. Once you've disconnected the locks, I still wasn't able to get the top up because it's, it wouldn't fold under no pressure. So, once you've disconnected the locks from the inside, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to one remove these trim pieces remove these trim pieces they're held in by clips right here you kind of um, pull up or back to release them it's uh, held in by a torque socket right along the seam right there and then you remove this uh, oops. you remove this piece right here this is just held in by like, like a hook shaped clip like this you just pull it back and then there'll be another torque socket right here then you'll be able to remove this. And this takes some finagling to get out. It takes a lot of finagling. But just keep working on it. Try not to break nothing. And you'll be able to remove it. Because once you remove it, you'll have better access to get to the three bolts that hold the top in on the back. You have a bolt right here. You have a bolt right there. See this one? Yeah. Bolt right there. And then you have a bolt right there. These two are 13s. These, this is an Allen key. That's what I used on it. It was like a European Allen key or some shit like that. But I used the Allen key on it. So that's what hold the top in. But with that bolt, with this bolt right here, I'm gonna insert a clip or a picture. Right, it's a metal, it's pieces of metal that are used as spacers. In this right here, probably like right under this trim piece. Those spacers like help out with the um, the distance between. Those spacers what I did is I took a picture and I also counted them before I took them out so I know they were right on each side all right once you got this off you pull the top straight up my top did not fold that's why I had to remove all this shit so I was able to get to the bolts because even though I disconnected the tonneau cover it still wouldn't come up because my top wouldn't fold so pull it straight up and when you pull it straight up it'll pull this up along with it and then boom, everything is out and you're golden. Oh yeah, and I forgot one more thing. When you're in the process of you removing the top, once you've disconnected the locks for this bitch, the car is gonna think that the top, when this is up, the car locks the trunk automatically because it's like the process so you don't open the trunk when this is up so in the process of you working on the top 
if you need to go in the trunk, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to pop your uh, pop your center lock fuse. It's the locks, it's the fuse, so when you turn the key, it locks all the locks in place. You take that fuse out, it's a video below. I'm gonna list that video that shows you which fuse that is, because I don't know how to <laughs> like, but um yeah. I don't have I didn't put that fuse back in, so I can't lock all my doors at once, which isn't a big deal. Alright, now along with the manual top, you're gonna need well you don't need it, but but okay, you're gonna need the manual, the rear manual locking system. So they look like this. They're different from the automatic locks. The automatic locks look like that joint over there. That's what the automatic locks look like. This is what the manual lock looks like. It's, it's really, really simple. It's held in by two cables. You see the cables here? These two right here. And there's one on that side because there's one cable for the release and there's one cable going to the lock. And there's one cable over there going to the lock on the other side. All right? Now, ooh, got squeeze in here. North bottle. All right, so this is very important what you need for the manual top. It's your junction box. Here we go. Okay, you're gonna need this contraption. This is like your junction box. It's what uh connects both locks, so you can you know you're able to lock both. You're gonna need this. Granted, I can I'll put the link to all the parts number for this for like the whole rear locking system. I'll put a link in the uh, the description. So you can find all the parts numbers and order this yourself. I bought this whole kit from a guy who was, he would have a bunch of BMWs and he'd part everything out. So he gave me the whole rear locking system for 200. Yeah, he gave me the whole rear locking system for like 200 bucks. So 170 plus 200, add it up. I don't feel like it. So once you got the rear locking system it's, it ba it's basically direct bolting it bolts in the exact spot all you have to do is mock up how you want it i'll post another video to the link where that helped me uh with the locking system itself yeah check this out locked gotta be fast lock probably gonna have it set up like this but you pull it oh shit but yeah, this is like a rough explanation, but we'll do another quick rundown in it, just a really quick one. So it's three bolts to hold the actual top in. Just got two brackets on each side, three bolts, bolt there, bolt there, and a bolt right there. To release the front, again, I put the directions for that in the description, but you just have to unwind it. It releases the latches, boom, the front's done. Yeah, do the front first, then do the brackets, Pull the top straight on up. Uh, make sure, like I said before, before you pull the, pull the top up, make sure this shit is released. If it's not released, pull your latch. If it don't, if you don't pull the latches, I mean that you pull the latch and it don't come up, you have to do what I did. Cut that big ass hole. Uh, undo the locks from the inside. Two torx bolts, and um, boom! Once you drop those locks, this bitch will come right on up. Uh, so pull the top up. Top will pull this up. And then it's just the same process back rebolting. Again, I quote, count how many. Actually, no. When you take these shits out, don't lose the spacers. Get every single spacer. Count them. Make sure they're right. And make sure they're even. And put these spacers back because you're going to need them. Make sure they're even. Like mine was, I think, 10 or 11 on each side. Don't remember exactly. But it was 10, 11 little metal spacers on each side. Need those. All right. Uh, well, that's a quick rough explanation rundown on how to do a manual swap actually swapping the top you can swap just this part to your automatic top you can do that i've seen that there's a there's a form on that if i could find it where you where you can just swap this assembly to the manual top i mean to the auto top granted i don't know too much about that i just found i just searched on a from my east coast well they have spots all over the country i use lkq pick your parts they have a inventory of all their cars just search you know bmw and see what cars they got look for convertibles specifically you want to look for 318s a lot of the 318s came with the manual top option because you know it's like a basic like you know the basic necessity shit 
because this is 328i so it has like more of the features you know like the higher end trim so we get the automatic top which is the headache and the the 318's got the uh the auto uh, manual top so yeah that's how you do it but uh yeah I'll show you a look at the car real quick mm -hmm. yes uh yes uh yes uh had this car for a year and i was just able to drop the top i finally dropped the top like a week ago happy as hell but yeah all right follow your boy at uh that that blue three six all right